Welcome back to We Still Like Each Other, the podcast. My name's Travis. And I'm Stephanie. And this is the podcast where we show that the honeymoon stage can last forever. Forever and ever. Like the t-shirt says. Like the t-shirt says. I'm wearing our Valentine's Day drop and it is available on our website. Order it right now. Like literally pause the show. Go on we still like each other dot com and order it so that way you could get it in time for Valentine's Day. Thank you to everyone who's already placed an order. Mm-hmm. I think people have started getting their order yeah, even since yesterday. yesterday yeah. Mm-hmm. And honestly, I think it's just a dope shirt in general. It doesn't say Valentine's Day or anything. So it's still a dope shirt to have if you like red. Um, we have a few tote bags left. And there's also sticker packs still available. But definitely, if you want the Valentine's Day card, you got to order it ASAP so yeah. you could get it before the 14th. For sure. <laughs> How was your week, babe? It was good. Um, went by pretty fast. Mm-hmm. Work was work was decent. And yeah, I feel like the weekend flew. Yeah. Like depressingly flew. Yeah. Um, it's It sucks. It's never enough time. Yeah. I did want to say like thank you to everybody who reached out after kind of... We mentioned how like shitty the past couple weeks had been. Yeah, a lot of the comments were like, I hope you have a great restart to your week. Yes. And I think I did. Like yeah. the week felt smooth and went by fast. It was nothing out of the ordinary happened um i think it was a decent week i want to do better this week okay um and i have to mentally prepare like you're not here on monday so taking advantage of sunday night just to jump start my week is gonna be crucial for me um but yeah thank you to everybody who reached out about that uh when you when you were in the workforce Mm -hmm. did you give yourself like little things to look forward to to like help yourself get through the week um it depends on the job right because i feel like when i was actually teaching my weeks flew Mm. i felt so productive and busy but like a good busy Mm. um i will say that towards the end of the year it would get harder and like you'll be like oh my god i'm exhausted but I didn't really have to look forward to the weekend because it felt like it came so quickly. Gotcha. Um, other jobs, I don't know. I always knew I wasn't the type to have a regular like nine to five because that routine is too much for me. Like I'd be looking at the clock. Like honestly, in high school, every 45 minute period felt like forever. Like I'd be staring at the clock. Um, waitressing was a good job that kept me on my feet. And I wasn't really forget the time. You forget the time. Um, So, yeah, not really. Why do you feel like you have to do that? I feel like I've been doing that my whole life. Uh, And not that it would be like sad otherwise. But I think even if it's something small, I'll just give myself something to look forward to. Like February. Oh, I'm off on the 20th. Mm. The following day is Eli's birthday. I'm taking that day. So it's like, all right, make it to that. And then after that. Make it to the next thing. Make it to the next thing. And I've been, I'll be 35 this year. I'm not sure if you know, (laughs) but um, it's never failed me. Okay. So it it keeps you going. It doesn't, the days feel shorter, you think? Possibly. Or at least easier to get through Easier to deal with. It's kind of like when you know you have a vacation coming up. Mm. So I just give myself like pockets of happiness or joy (laughs) to look forward to. It's yeah. not saying like work is so miserable, but it's work, you know. It, I feel like you separate it. Like work is work. Um, it's not that you hate it, but it's also just a what are you a responsibility that you just have to complete. Like yeah. you're just very um, rational about it, which is good. And I, I will say just quickly on work, like I am fortunate that mm-hmm. I have some coworkers that I consider friends. Yeah, yeah. So when I'm there, it's kind of like. It's it's fun. Yeah. And you, you always you used to point out that you get to go to work and have like adult conversation mm-hmm. and I'm your only adult, at least face to face conversation. So mm-hmm. I'm very grateful that I have people at work I enjoy talking to. Yeah. I need to do better at reaching out to friends during the week because even though in the moment, like while I'm home, I don't realize I'm missing adult interaction. But I do notice that when you finally get home, I'm kind of like yearning for your attention. And you're like, (laughs) yeah, and I have so much to say to you. And like, I feel like I don't want to overwhelm you with that responsibility of like filling my cup of human interaction. Um, So I need to do better 
at just reaching out to my friends so that I don't feel like I'm attacking you as soon as you walk through the door. Yeah, it's important. I I fumble a lot when it comes to that. Even people text me and then two days later, I'm like, fuck. You forgot I, to text back. I feel terrible. Yeah. Um, it happened to me actually this week. Someone texted me, gave me a little update on what's going on with them. And I didn't answer to two days later. And it wasn't lighthearted what they told me either. Mm. And I felt like shit. Mm. Um, yeah, I'm a work in progress. Yeah. It's also we're adults and we're busy and we're doing shit. Right. So like sometimes I'll have a friend call me unexpectedly. And although like I might have so much to share, it might be in a moment that I'm like focused on something else and it's uncomfortable. Like it's like I want to talk to you, but I'm in the middle of something and it it feels weird. Mm. Um, I think we have to start honestly scheduling time to catch up with our friends. Yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. We schedule time to actually hang out. Yeah. Like we spoke about hanging out with Jojo and Dara recently. Mm-hmm. I think that was scheduled like a month in advance. Yeah, maybe three weeks in advance. But still. Yeah. Like, but even a phone call, like maybe like, oh, let's chat and like put it in your calendar. And I think those conversations end up being like very, what do I say it? They're the best conversations. Fruitful. Because you actually know that that's what you're going to do in that time. So your mind isn't in a million other places. Yeah, right? as opposed to when you just, it's you know, I'm, I'm, good, I'm good for the cold call. I'll just call someone randomly FaceTime and they might not be. And they're be, probably like, oh, fuck. Here, here we go. go again. Let me take this cold out my eye. And you know what Travis does? He likes to call like people like around me. And I just hear his phone ringing and I'm like, who are you calling? And I like to, I don't know. I feel like you even put me on the spot when you just call like your parents or something. Or sometimes I get a phone call and it's for me. And then the person, I I usually take my calls on speaker because I hate. (laughs) Oh God, I know what you're going to say. I usually take my calls on speaker. I hate holding the phone to my my ear. And the person's just talking to me about something. And then all of a sudden out of left field, Stephanie just throws her input. And and then she goes. (laughs) So you're supposed to let people know if they're on speaker first of all. I think at this point, a lot, almost everyone in my life assumes that you're around. (laughs) And if not, then you need to ask. It is so impossible for me not to interject. Like, especially if you're like saying something wrong or you're not sure of something. I'm like, no, it's this. And you're like, bro, this was an A and B conversation. (laughs) Like, I'm like, you got it on speaker. (laughs) So if anyone calls me just and you don't want Stephanie to know. Don't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. But yeah. And you need to let me know when you're calling people. Okay. Sometimes you'll be FaceTiming people. I'm like, I do not want to be on FaceTime right now. It's just, it's just a spur of the moment thing. It's because you're all handsome on FaceTime with the beard and the, the silver streak in your hair and your deep ass voice. Thank you. For me, it's a lot. <laughs> I'm like, no, I don't want to be on FaceTime right now. Um, yeah. So before we went into Did You Know, I wanted to talk about this TikTok that we that I saw. Okay. Um, so it's this girl on TikTok. She's not like popular on, on TikTok. Or she's just like a regular person that um, actually someone I know sent me the page. I'm not going to say who because I'm like, are they connected or not? I don't know. Whatever. The TikTok, she's talking about how she thinks she should do something to have a better relationship with her baby daddy. Right. Okay. I kind of wrote the transcript out because I was like, let me write it out so I don't fuck it up. And she said, I text my baby daddy and I said, hey, would you like to celebrate our two year anniversary of breaking up by going out? (laughs) And he said, no, thank you. (laughs) What do you think on that? Would that be an appropriate text to receive from a? I think knowing myself, I, I would see the humor in it. Okay. And I would be open to it. I think it's just hilarious. Like you can't avoid the fact that you're going to be in each other's lives forever. Like you're Uh connected by another human. So why not have it be lighthearted? So I feel like my knowing my personality, I would be receptive to that. Yeah. She said, why can't he be cool? I'm not trying to get back with you. I'm just trying to do something different. I really don't want him back. I think it it could be something fun we could do. Let's have a better relationship for our son. I was going to say before you finished that it's a slippery slope Mm. because you don't know if he's in a relationship Mm -hmm. and 
I don't know. I I could speak for my relationship. If I happen to have had a baby mother mm -hmm. and she wanted to celebrate the day we broke up, I think you would have said hell to the fucking. <laughs> like it wouldn't have even been. Like you wouldn't. You have wouldn't even, even ask me something like that. Yeah, it would have just been sweat dripping down. <laughs> so that was my point. I think yes, I see the humor in it. Um, I also think that if she genuinely wanted to do that. It should have been more of a conversation versus like, hey, you want to go out to celebrate? It should be a conversation about how can we build our relationship. Yeah, not celebrate the day we broke up. It's just... By going out. But and I, even if... Yeah. Sorry. Um, I think it's a great idea to work on their friendship. Yeah, absolutely. But the way she phrased it. And I also think the friendship level depends on the circumstances of the breakup, right? Because I could be a, a great co-parent, but hold boundaries for someone who maybe repeatedly crossed my boundaries, you know, disrespected me. I don't have to be friendly with you, but I can co-parent with you. Being friendly, I think, is amazing, but I think there has to be some boundaries because of that. Building other relationships outside of your ex if y'all cool going out to dinner, going out to movies and bowling because y'all friends, it's like, no. And honestly, for me, I wouldn't want my partner to have any female friend like that anyway, let alone someone you had a child with. That's rough. That's rough. Like, I, I know how you feel on the whole <laughs> opposite sex friendships. Yeah. But I think that that's acceptable because... You want to show your child that although we didn't work out, they're still, at, you were created out of love. Mm -hmm. I, I there, there has to be boundaries. Like there's limits to where you can take it, but I think it's still acceptable. And I think you can show the kid like you were created out of love. We have respect for one another in group family activities, like going bowling as a family, doing dinner as a family every once in a okay, while so, oh, but hold not on, just hold on, hold on, alone hold on, hold on so put your play, put yourself in the mindset of i have a child with someone okay and i'm like hey me so and so and the baby are gonna go bowling okay just us okay you're okay with that yeah hey next week me so and so and the baby are gonna go to dinner okay there's never a time where you're like whoa these motherfuckers are doing something every week I don't think so. I think it depends on the relationship. Like if their boundaries have been crossed and like y'all be fucking around one week no, and no, not. There's no fucking if around. If y'all clearly are over with and it's for the child, I don't think anything's but wrong you don't with think that. Something, you don't think a friendship is naturally going to grow from that? Yeah. A friendship with boundaries. Y'all not going to go have dinner or go bowling alone. Okay, so we can hang out as long as the baby's there. Yeah. And I also think, am I never, ever included? I don't mind she if don't I'm fuck with you. No, <laughs> see that that's a I'm joking. Circumstantial. It all depends, I'm, right? I'm saying I'm joking for my imaginary imaginary baby. baby. <laughs> um, that used to be one of my irrational fears when we first got together. I, I told you that, yeah. like that someone would pop up, like you know, I have his baby, or even y'all heard. Well, someone. Um, I thought you were gonna say, you know, you hearing episode one. You always had a fear that oh, she would. Pop I wasn't up. gonna be so specific about it, but okay. Yeah, but saying someone is just like anyone could pop up. I feel yeah, like it's a it's a <laughs> rational fear to think that my ex yes, could have said so that. So from episode one, yeah, I know the drama with his ex. So in the beginning, like when that was done and we were together, I was like, what if she pops up in nine months? Like I had your baby, so I did have that fear. So not so irrational then. Now that we put context yeah. to it, <laughs> just random someone pop out a truck with a big head baby. You never know. Okay. You've had some partners and okay. you never know what happens. Okay. <laughs> I don't got it. I used as a someone who has, you know, a biological dad who's a womanizer, I used to have that fear too that I have a random sibling out there that I don't know about. Mm. Yeah, and that he doesn't know about, you know? It's not like a big thing, especially in I mean, it's a big thing in Caribbean culture, period, but I've heard a few Dominicans. Isn't there like a saying as far as like, be careful who you date because you just yeah. never know? Um, I know we used to be like, oh, you, especially if you have the same last names. But I'm like, what if it's someone who they never claimed, you know, like it could be like a random person. I'm sure that's happened in life in the world, like coincidentally. Yeah. 
And then there's some people who don't give a fuck and know they're related, but that's a different. Oh, that's a whole different. We're not even going to go there right now. In Kentucky. <laughs> so, yeah, basically, I agree with her point. I think she went about it wrong. Um, and also boundaries need to be set. Also, don't feel forced to have such a friendly, happy, go lucky relationship with your ex just because y'all have a kid. You have to set boundaries. And I think that's healthy to teach your ch- your kid that. Like, yeah, they're your dad, they're your mom, but I have to set healthy boundaries to protect myself and you'll eventually have to do the same thing. Yeah. I agree. Um, all right. So did you know? Did you know? My nose is running. I apologize. <laughs> um, did you know? Did you know men are likely to lie six times a day, which is twice as often as women? This is triggering for me. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't say y'all don't lie uh, well it says half as much as men right what is that half as much or was it yeah y'all, y'all lie twice as much as women twice twice as often yeah it's triggering for me because <laughs> i can't lie for shit like i have especially to you about things like even if i'm trying to keep a secret like a surprise it's really hard for me to do because it's written all over my face Okay, but hold on. I want this did you know to be lighthearted. Okay. Because it's You already not, know where it's going to go. You're like scared. No, no I'm not scared. I'm just saying like, it doesn't have to be like, oh, he's lying about a girl. Or he's lying about this. Like, yes. it could just be like. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Did you. I don't know. What's something light? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know something men lie about a lot. What? <laughs> well, people, I guess, in general. Like if, like, let's say I asked you. Oh, can you buy me um, the Chobani oat milk after work? And you forget, but you'd be like, oh, I went and they didn't have it. Mm, definitely did that. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't shit. When you did that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it was Chobani oat milk. But, but something that you something. just said, they didn't have it, but you probably didn't even go. Yeah, or I looked. That, yo. See, that's such a, like, because all you got to say is I forgot. Yeah, you tried telling that to you. (laughs) I must say I searched high and low. Ah, that's a slippery slope. You see, you can't be lying about little things like that. No, I mean I it's not often. Yeah, yeah. And I honestly have a hard time keeping the truth from you too, especially when it comes to surprise. I just be like, So you wanna know? (laughs) You wanna tell me exactly what happened. Um, yeah. I hope that all of us grow to be bad liars as we get older right Mm. like why we gotta lie we gotta be honest that's true do you think there's any such thing as a good lie um yeah i think sometimes the only way to set a boundary to protect yourself is to lie like for example like if you're trying to set boundaries between work and your personal life and then there's someone at work like trying to mingle in or invite you out and you don't want to and you're like afraid to just be honest about that, you lie. Like I can't, I gotta be, I don't got a babysitter, I need to do X, Y, and Z. Like sometimes lying is necessary just to keep your sanity. I'm afraid for the kids to get older because I can't lie about having to get home to them. What? I'd be like saying, oh yeah, I gotta go kids. All right. Oh, <laughs> I didn't get what you were saying. Okay. So you you use that as a parent to like get out of work stuff. Yeah, like people I bet yeah, no, listen, keep inviting me. Maybe one day. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do want you to like go out after work. You know more what it often. is? It's it's not it's not that I don't want to. It's just that now with us living in New Jersey, it's like I really have to commit to it. It's not yeah. like before I could go out, stumble home on the train and yeah. whatever, or even take an Uber. Yeah. Now it's like, I really got to commit to it. And then it's like the the bus or the train for you to get home is like on a certain schedule. So you got to be on time to catch the right train or bus. If not, you're waiting an hour. Yeah. That's, that's the part of living in the Bronx that I miss. Yeah. Just being in the city. Absolutely. I can see that. Um, do you think you lie more than I lie? I think you lie more and hold on, hold on, because I think omission of the truth is a lie. 
What do I omit? I just feel like I got to pull it out of you. Like at a certain, like if you're feeling a way about something and, and then it's like a week later, you're like, oh, I was going to tell you, but da, 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 da. so I feel like you do that. a lot. I omit. Honestly, I do that because sometimes I'm too much and sometimes I need to just sit with my thoughts and ideas before I'm like bum rushing you and venting to you all the fucking time. I appreciate that. But it's also, although it's another irrational fear you have of yours where it's like you think you're going to scare me off. Like I'm, I'm in it for the long haul. So it's like if you want to unpack, we can we can go through it together and I go back. No, that's that's ridiculous. Or no, you know what? There is some truth to that. Let's 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 um let's see what that thought is about. I that love one. you. I love you and I appreciate that. But I genuinely think there is a level of me being way too much, me venting too much, me being over dramatic. And I feel like it's healthy that I'm able to filter it a little bit before I push it onto you. I I don't fully agree. Okay. But I appreciate that you you put thought into it. Yeah. And when I realize like it's something that needs to be discussed or it's a bigger issue, I do tell you. And I think it bothers you when you find out that I've been holding on to it for a while. You're like, why didn't you been yeah, say I it? I could have deja vu for all the times you were like, well, I wanted to tell you this two weeks ago, but. Yeah. <laughs> But <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that's not lying. That's like me filtering my all the voices in my head. <laughs> okay. All right. So topic one, it's basically I found an IG post that I was like, we need to talk about this because the word gaslighting. What do, what do you know gaslighting to be? Like if someone said, you're gaslighting me or he's gaslighting her, or she's gaslighting him. What does that word mean to uh, you? The, okay. Um, what the word means, well, I'll say it's a buzzword. Okay. Um, it's, the, it's the word of 2022. Okay. Hopefully it doesn't carry over into 2023. No, it's an important word, but okay. Why, um, why gaslighting, do you feel that way? The way, yeah. I, the way I, well, let me think, say what I think it means first. I okay. think it means when you're trying to convince someone of something that they know to be true for example i'm you look well it's maybe hard to tell but you're like you're sh i'm telling you my shirt is green mm -hmm. and you're like no it's blue I'm like, no baby trust me it's green it's just a different shade of green okay and you just never seen the shade so of. so even though i know that it's blue you're just trying to convince yeah. me otherwise and how would that appear in a relationship um just like maybe a feeling that you're having about something and I'm trying to convince you that it's something else or like it's irrational, like, or maybe I shouldn't be feeling that way. Yeah. So for me, when I, the understanding I've always had of the word is like trying to convince me that my feelings are invalid or that my experiences aren't true. Um, or even like blatant denial, like, like I, in my head right now, I have the shaggy. It wasn't me. <laughs> You know, like I saw you with On this the girl. <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> but naked. But, and you're like, it wasn't me. Like, so like come, trying to make me feel like, am I crazy? Like, did I imagine this? Like, you're so adamant about denying something that I saw really happen. I see that as like gaslighting. Um, but I saw this post and it's like, there's five different. On this post, there's five different forms of gaslighting. Oh, my God. Now there's levels to gaslighting. There's levels to it because I feel like you just said, like, oh, it's a buzzword. I hope it doesn't continue. I think it's an important word if it's... Used you, properly? You Yes. Yeah. I just think this... Listen, gaslighting is a fire word. Okay. Double entendre, fire, gas. But, <laughs> You're uh, annoying. I just think that it's being used too recklessly and mm -hmm. you throwing that label i remember i i don't remember the exact disagreement we were having but i remember one time you even told me i was gaslighting you about something and i was just like what the fuck is happening right now that mm -hmm. in this moment that's the word you chose to use because it's like pretty serious it's mm -hmm. like it's like it's like putting a label on someone. Mm -hmm. So I felt I took offense to that. I can't remember what it, what Actually, it was. Actually, I do remember what it was, and it's not appropriate to talk about. For but, real? Yeah. Okay. I feel like I might have used it also. Like, sometimes I'm like, 
when I say you're doing something for me, but with a bad attitude, like I'm going oh, yeah, to bring it back to cooking. So I'm like, you're doing it like you don't want to, como sin gana, like, ugh, with like a nasty attitude. And I don't want you doing anything for me like that. And you're like, no, I'm fine. I don't have an attitude. I'm like, you think like, am I blind? Like, I know you. And I'm like, that's a form of gaslighting. Like, you're trying to convince me that I'm ex- I'm misreading you. You just gave me chills even saying it. But then you're like, it's me. How could you tell me what I'm feeling? And I'm like, because I've been married to you and I see you and I, your actions, your passive aggressiveness. And then we get into this argument about I'm right, you're wrong, where I'm like, no, you're just trying to gaslight me. Mm. <laughs> so I am triggered because we that's exactly how the that conversation has gone. Yeah. And I still hold true that I'm fine. I'm fine. Even then, though I look like I hate my life. Listen, people always tell me about you jokingly from episode one talking about my resting Mitch face. Like mm-hmm. it is just who I am and I'm actively work on it, working on it. I know, baby, but there's a difference. I know resting Mitch face versus like, I hate this right now. All right, but let's not go there. That wasn't on You're the agenda. You're gaslighting me. <laughs> <laughs> right? We're gaslighting each other, maybe. Mm. Who knows? But yeah. Levels. Yeah. What were you saying? I like cut you off. I can't recall. About gaslighting. And you were like, I remember when you called me. In. Like, why do you feel like it's a issue? Because it's a heavy word to put on. It's like putting a label on someone. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's in the form of manipulation, right? Okay. So you're essentially calling me a manipulator. A manipulator. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I'm just... I don't use it that much. You don't use it that much. And yeah. it's literally maybe less than a handful of times. Yeah, yeah. But still, it's still something that stings. So I don't like that shit. And I worry that because it is such a buzzword and very trendy, that there are people using it for people that don't deserve it. And it's also like a word that kind of puts a a a bad image of you right so if you're like oh my ex he used to gaslight me all the time you're like oh oh, he's a gaslighter like oh he's the worst person ever and great point (laughs) um i say more so when we used to live in the bronx your friends would come over and then i'm on the computer but they don't really hold their tongue around me they're just (laughs) they're just talking about men or whatever Mm -hmm. and i'm hearing conversations about certain men and then i'm like 99 percent sure someone has said like yeah he was trying to gaslight me and blah 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 so now in my head i'm just throwing out a random name kevin mm-hmm. oh that that nigga's crazy like he he was gaslighting her so now if anyone else uses that term with someone else you you equate that to kevin and all the other bad things he probably did right exactly like if kevin again this is a fictional person we just threw out a random name <laughs> if kevin was like uh he cheated he was abusive financially um and he was a gaslighter. Now, whenever the term is used, you're associating it with this person who's like terrible. Boom. <laughs> um, I think there's a bigger conversation to also be had about labels because we say like, I have anxiety or she's bipolar or I have OCD. We need to stop using all those labels, like mental health labels, narcissists. Like, that's a big popular one, too, to say, like, she's a narcissist. He's a narcissist. And those are actual legit mental health diagnosis. And we can't just be using it like it's a fucking Zodiac sign. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And most of us don't even know the true meaning of these words. Mm -hmm. My favorite example is. I remember when the streetwear brand Anti Social Social Club was coming up, mm-hmm. and you have a psychology major background, so you're <laughs> like, you know, it doesn't mean like what you think it means. Yeah, and you never let me buy a t-shirt, <laughs> <laughs> or even if I was like, I'm a grown man, I'm gonna still buy it. I had you in the back of my um, yeah. head, like. <sighs> Honestly, like the shirts were cool. It was very popular, trendy. Everybody copied it. Like every brand has a a saying with that same font of mm-hmm. Anti Social Social Club. But I learned in college that antisocial means like you're against society, right? So like sociopaths are antisocial, murderers, thieves. Those are people that are antisocial against society. People who are like shy, introverts. Or like to stay home. <laughs> they're called asocial. But even though that's the definition, I feel like words, we as a society give them meaning, Right. So although that's the definition on paper, like 
the antisocial when it's used in our society just means like a social i'm i'm an introvert so i get it but it, it was just annoying to me knowing it like i wouldn't want to wear the shirt like that's just me my shit <laughs> no shade to anybody who works. psychology majors across the world were like these fucking clowns <laughs> um and it also was strange like is a social club for antisocial people but whatever um that's neither here nor there <laughs> Um, so I'm going to read from this post from self-care advocates on Instagram. And it says five forms of gaslighting. So the first one they have is withholding. When the abusive partner refused to listen or avoid seeking understanding of what their partner is trying to communicate with them. So why can't that just be withholding? It's a form of gaslighting. I get what you're saying, but. There's levels. <laughs> <laughs> Refuses to listen or avoid seeking understanding. So that's like if they misunderstand you, but they don't even allow you the opportunity to explain yourself or, or for you to explain your perspective. And they're just like, whatever, I'm right. No matter what you say, I don't even care to know what your thoughts are. And that's kind of abusive in a way, right? Gaslighting countering when the abusive partner questions the victim's memory and recollection of events even if the other partner is remembering correctly that's kind of like the one we mentioned that's what we thought the un- the definition of gaslighting was countering i'd rather be called a counterer than a <laughs> gaslighter well this is this is actually a bad one this is like you literally trying to make me feel crazy like i can't even trust my own vision and perspective on anything because you're just trying to convince me that i didn't see what i saw blocking and diverting when the abusive partner attempts to switch topics and steers the conversation to questioning the other partner's thoughts i hate that i feel like that's very childish it's like a childish give me an example like if we're discussing something that I don't know, like if I'm upset with you for like not taking out the trash and then you're like, oh, um, did River play with his toys today that I bought him? And you're like, what the fuck? Like, we're talking mm-hmm. about this. Why are you deflecting about something else? Like completely. And very, I think that's a very childish. Yeah. Because I rem- as a teacher, too, like my students will do that. Like they'll probably be like, OK, but I, this weekend, like I'm like, you need to make sure you do your homework. All right. I went to the zoo and I did. And you're like, wait, what? Like, mm-hmm. hold on. We were not even done with this topic. Or the other wa- way of doing it is like, if I'm like, why didn't you take out the garbage? And you're like, why didn't you cook dinner yet? You know, like now you're finding something that I did wrong. Right. Switches topics or steers the conversation to questioning the other partner's thoughts. Yeah, i that I guess that kind of reminds me of when like someone brings something to you and you use that opportunity to bring up some uh, issue you have with them. Mm-hmm. Is that kind of similar? Yeah. So it's like deflecting, which is a form of gaslighting, I guess. I guess the pattern I'm seeing here is that the whoever the gaslighter is, is not respecting your feelings, your perspective, your reality of a situation and just deflecting in one way or another. Whether it's that by convincing you that that didn't happen or changing the subject or uh, refusing to even listen to you. Like, oh, I'm not having this. That's something a lot of I've noticed in abusive relationships. Like if you bring up an issue, they're just leaving. Like, oh, I'm not talking about this. I'm I'm coming back, but not if you want to talk about that. Why are you laughing? I Because you always use examples of like, things you read or maybe even things people wrote in and i uh-huh. just be like they people are allowed to do that <laughs> and i it's just like you you set a precedent mm-hmm. very early on in this relationship of what you were and weren't <laughs> going to deal with so when i hear that people be wilding like this i'm yeah. just like Yo. Um, i remember from i think it was from uh did you know that we read but it was just a a issue of no unable to hold their partner accountable because whenever they did they would like leave like oh no i'm not dealing with this like if that's what we're talking about i'm not coming back i'll come back when we're done with that conversation so like that's a form of gaslighting in a way they're not even trying to convince you that you're crazy but they're just like i'm not dealing with it do you think 
so like I said, you set a precedent very early on on the things mm-hmm. you would accept in this relationship from mm-hmm. me. Do you think it's difficult to kind of recover on those things? Like, let's say it wasn't something that you, let's say it was something I was doing in the beginning, but then I don't know, a year or two into the relationship. Now you're like, no, I got to fix this. Mm-hmm. Like, is it recoverable? Yeah, absolutely. Because even in with anything we grow, we change. Right. So, if there was something I was putting up with that I didn't even realize was an issue, because that tends to happen, right? You think like, this is normal. This is what's supposed to happen. This is what love feels like. And then you grow, you learn, you read a book and you you can change your boundaries. I just think that an understanding has to be had on both parts, right? I have read this book and now I understand that this is something abusive. The other partner may be like, what? This is This is just what I've always done. So that that's probably the trickiest part. And then even once both partners are aware that the behavior is abusive or inappropriate is breaking out of that habit. Right. Because when you're so used to doing something, it becomes like breathing, walking, riding a bike like you just fall into these patterns. Right. So the next step is just being super intentional, catching yourself when it happens and. Kind of being okay with admitting that you fucked up again because sometimes we're wrong and strong like i'm in this pattern i know i want to break but you deserved it i needed to be this way versus being like oh fuck this is something i was trying to avoid yeah. and sometimes it's like literally decades of unlearning mm-hmm. and it's not going to be done so quickly so i think that's the most important part is that you're communicating during the process yeah repair and finding ways to like just fix what you just did and then avoid doing it again Mm -hmm. minimizing how often it happens it's not going to be an overnight thing you also really uh to put a pen in that is that you also have to have a partner who's receptive and realizes that it's not something that could just be an overnight Mm -hmm. like just because you have a big blow up about something and it's like all right i'm gonna do my best to recover know that next week you may be having the same conversation Mm -hmm. i don't think that means that that person isn't trying but how long are we going to allow the 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 behavior you're trying to change to happen weekly? No, I and I agree. There is a limit. Right. But I don't think it should just be like, we had this conversation. You told me you were going to try, but you did it again. Exactly. But eventually you want it to happen less often, right? Agreed. Over time. So maybe at first you're going to still be doing it every day, every other day. Then maybe just once a week, maybe a couple of times a month. But if it's year five... And even once a month, you're still crossing this boundary. It's like, what the fuck? You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yes. But over time, the expectation is that the toxic behavior, whatever it is, stops. Um, And there might be a trigger there and it might happen once in a blue, but not in a pattern of like once a week, once a month, because then it's just like, there's a bigger issue here. You're refusing to like meet this boundary or this expectation. Um. But yeah, let's go back to different forms of gaslighting. I think I got a couple more. Oh, joy. (laughs) Trivializing. When the abusive partner minimizes the other partner's feelings and emotions, the abusive partner makes the other partner feel meaningless and unimportant. Hmm. So it's kind of like you always you're just dramatic. Like you're crazy. You're overthinking it. Or are you PMSing? Or it's the hormones. It's the baby. That's trivializing. Like, it's not that big of a deal. You need to chill. Yeah, I agree. Um, <laughs> is that the last one? No, I think there's one more. Why? Okay. What I'll, were you going to say? I want to say something. Like that. What? <laughs> no, I just feel like it kind of goes back to what I was saying as as, as far as um, gaslighting being a buzzword. Like, I feel like all these things are valid. But to kind of attach it to gaslighting, to me, seems a little silly, but... I think it's good because we're realizing that these behaviors that may seem small to some people are part of a big problem. And it's actually a pattern of abuse. So giving the fact that you're trivializing my emotions and you're making me feel like I'm unimportant or meaningless or it's because I'm PMSing like this actually isn't an issue. It's a form of abuse and it's called gaslighting. And if that helps you, it sting a little more. And for you to realize that it's an abusive pattern, I don't think anything's wrong with it. 
But be careful throwing that around. Yeah, but it has to be legit. And I just think people don't realize they think it's only one way. Like, I'm not gaslighting. Maybe you are. You just don't understand what it really means. You're gaslighting level A. <laughs> You're annoying. <laughs> um, I think this is the last one. Forgetting and denial. When the abusive partner acts like they don't remember a situation or conversation that occurred. They deny former promises they made to the other partner. Ooh. That's definitely gaslighting. Yeah, I agree. No, now you agree. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> I feel like we've had discussions where like, you're like, I don't remember that. And I'm like, you literally have the best memory. Travis will remember like moments, events, dinners, things we did that like I have, I forget. And then sometimes we'll be in a discussion and you're like, I don't remember that. And I'm like, what the fuck? But it's never like anything important. To me, it'd be important. No, it's never like you made a promise to me that you were going to do X, Y, and Z. And I'm just like, whoa, you're bugging. No, no, never like that. But it'll be like something small. Like, oh, I told you I was going to do this on this day. And then I'll be like, hey, what are we doing this weekend? And you're like, I literally told you on Wednesday. <laughs> so I'm gaslighting. How do I sound? <laughs> <laughs> insert, ins- insert Bronx voice. Yeah. And you'll be like, what? I don't remember that. I'm like, are you kidding me? But you remembered like June 7th of 2017. And I'm like, what the fuck? I can't. The brain is a mysterious thing. Okay. So do you still feel like gaslighting is a buzzword? Yes. But these are all valid. It is. Like we need to be careful using it. Um, Like I said, just like other labels. But it's important to understand when you're being abused. Yeah, I, and I think that's important. And it, although it's tough to admit, I think that if it's helping people realize the situations that they're in, then I'm here for it, right? Mm-hmm. Because not everyone's physically abused. Mm-hmm. So if everyone being trendy with the word gaslighting is helping you realize that this isn't the relationship for you, mm-hmm. then I'm here for or it. Or this isn't a healthy behavior in a relationship. Yeah. Yeah, I think the the information is important. All right. So the next topic is going to be full of spoilers because we've been watching some good TV and I want to talk about The Last of Us, episode three. Okay. Why you look all surprised? No, I was just like, because I didn't know what we were talking about. So <laughs> You're like, <sighs> oh my God. <laughs> but before we get into the next topic, I just want to say that if you are listening on any app or podcasts applications mm-hmm. apple spotify please leave us a five-star review mm-hmm. um if you don't want to leave us a five-star review maybe we'll get you on the next one mm-hmm. if you're watching on youtube like subscribe leave a comment please leave a comment mm-hmm. um, we love interacting with you all and you know letting us know what you think do you think gaslighting is a buzzword or have you ever been accused of gaslighting mm. um have you been gaslighted but didn't even realize it before let us know in the comments I think this episode is going to be called You're Gaslighting Me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, and uh, last but certainly not least, Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash We Still Like Each Other. Come over there if you want some bonus content from us. Just posted our vlog from the photo shoot that we had last week. And we're having an interactive recap this Thursday. I think that's number 16 or yeah, something. So interactive recaps are where we kind of have mini episodes but we allow our patrons to kind of join via Zoom. So it becomes just like an intimate conversation. Everybody gets to talk. Cameras could be on or off. Either way, um, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. And if you don't have time to actually join live, it's available. The yeah. video and the audio is available to so listen to. So it becomes to. like a bonus episode that you get to listen to, which is dope. Yep. So patreon.com forward slash we still like each other. All right. So now to our spoiler So again, spoiler alert, if you haven't watched Last of Us on HBO and you plan to, maybe you don't want to listen to this part of the episode. Um, And then there's going to be another spoiler alert about the Pamela Anderson documentary on Netflix. Okay, I haven't watched that. You haven't watched it, but it's like really dope relationship stuff that I really wanted to talk about. So let's talk about The Last of Us first. Okay. So I'm watching Last of Us because of you. Why did you really want to watch The Last of Us? So I've played, there's two parts. Uh, It's a video game released by Sony. Um, 
I've played part one and part two and loved them both. I even recall a time where I was playing and I think Stephanie just kind of like sat on the couch and kind of watched because mm-hmm. it's like one of those very story driven video yeah, games. Cinematic for sure. So even when you're doing things, there's always like a cut scene and Stephanie be like, oh, what's going on here? <laughs> so I love the game. I think it's um, part one's probably a little better than part two, but whatever. Overall, it's a very great story. Absolutely. So why are we talking about this on the show? Because episode three, which was the latest episode before recording this, had me in tears. Like sobbing. Like literally, like I haven't cried that much. You know, the last time I cried that much was when I saw um, the the five part series from the Central Park Five or the Exonerated Five now. That episode with Jarell Jerome, that episode had me crying the whole episode. That's the last time I cried this much. Yeah, that that. I remember that. That was during quarantine. Yeah. And that one, I probably cried more because I was crying for a longer period of time. But this Last of Us episode had me literally like, <laughs> like tears, like snot. <laughs> it was so good. And it was about a same sex couple. It was like an episode that stands alone. So like, if you don't even want to watch the whole series, if you want to just watch episode three, please do. So Episode three starts out with this guy named Frank. He's a survivalist, right? So what's a survivalist? How would you explain that? Someone who's just always preparing for the end of the world or the end of the world as we know it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they're getting guns, they're getting generators, they're getting canned foods. They're just like ready and prepared for when that day comes. Yes. And they just, they think it's just a matter of time. It's not if, it's when. When. And when it happens, y'all gonna be sorry. Mm -hmm. So... In the show, The Last of Us, it's basically, it's almost like a zombie apocalypse, but it's like a a fungus that spreads, that starts infecting people, and it's a very dangerous virus, so they evacuate everywhere, right? These zones. Frank is ready. He stays. Um, He looks like a very (laughs) anti-social, asocial man. Like He might be anti-social. Like the true definition. Yeah, like against society, but in the sense, not in the sense that he does anything to hurt people, but in the sense that he's like, I don't trust it. I don't believe in it. So he is antisocial in a sense. Um, And then after living on his own for maybe three to four years, he meets someone. How does he meet Bill? So Bill gets caught in one of his traps Mm -hmm. and he approaches Bill and offers Bill uh, I guess shelter and food. He doesn't want to at first because he's very antisocial. He's very asocial, and he's like, "Nope. If I give you food, every other bum that walks by here is gonna want to stop and get some food." Yeah. So he doesn't want to, but Bill was convincing. He's very charming. Very charming, and convinced him. He lets him in, and Frank is super like survivalist, asocial guy. He had, a, he had a gun on him the whole time. His whole time, like I don't trust this guy. Cause think about it world as we know it is done so you don't really trust anyone because there's no laws you can't call the cops and even as we were watching it we were like any minute now bill's going to do something we did not trust bill bill right yes we did not trust him we were like he's he's playing him oh my god frank's been doing good on his own and this is why and we're like he's gonna get him i was even like i have this weird like like anxiety or anxiousness when i'm watching shows now that i'm like baby he's gonna do it now Oh my God, I'm scared. Is he going to like catch him behind or whatever? And then to our surprise, like we did not see it coming at all. They're both gay. Bill lays it on him and the rest is history. Yeah, that was a surprise. We I, did I, not see it. It was a, I'll be honest. It was like an uncomfortable surprise for yeah, me. Yeah, because we weren't expecting it. I, this whole time I'm expecting him to like kill him or knock him up in the head and take his stuff and then all of a sudden they're kissing and it's like two bearded men and you're just like yeah and it's not what us as a society we assume that gay men have this like femininity to them or something that we would know and frank as this survivalist he gives you like very trump america vibes like he will storm the capital and like be homophobic like that's what you would assume from him but they fall in love and frank says he had never been with a man ever so i guess he did live his life where he isolated himself and he was never open about who he truly was and 
in hindsight, it's like now this is the perfect place for him to be himself. And it's not corny. It's not cheesy. Like, it doesn't feel forced. Yeah, like, I feel like very quickly you just you forget that it's two men, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Like, you know, how some people. Not that you forget, but. It, it's like the least important part of the story. Yeah, because sometimes um, LGBTQ plus couples are forced into storylines where it feels like I'm just trying to be politically correct or like, you know. The story still was just amazing. And it's just kind of like gay people exist in life and no matter what forms there are. So if there is some type of fungus pandemic that spreads, like people who are gay are going to exist within it and we need to tell their stories. You know, it, it was just beautifully written, beautifully executed. The acting, everything was just amazing. I I still right now, I'm like, I want to watch it again. And you never bought me the wine or did you go and didn't have it? So the one, <laughs> the one near me, they didn't sell that one. How do you know? Because I look on the site and you can search the store. Mm. You sure? Yeah, or are you I'm lying? Not, this is not a did you know right now. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so in the part of the story, um, Frank has wine. He like at that once everybody got evacuated, he like ransacked all the stores and he got wines. So when he first fed bill he poured this wine and then at the end of the episode they had the same glass of wine um i'm gonna just spoil it because i said it was a spoiler episode (laughs) so at the end 20 years go by and bill gets sick he it seems like ms ms some type of like degenerative disease and think about it there's no doctors no hospitals nothing so Bill decides, like, this is it. Like, I'm done. He wants to die. And he tells his husband how, or his partner, like, how he wants to be killed. Or he tells him the day he wants to have. Mm-hmm. Like, my last day. Like, this is the things I want to do today. And then finally how he wants to go, which is basically by crushing up a bunch of pills into wine. Mm-hmm. And I was just hysterical while they were living, like, his last day. The tears were just nonstop. It was like insanity. And then at the end, Frank decides to also kill himself. So they both die the same night. And my heart was just literally broken. It was like the saddest fucking thing I've watched in years. Yeah, I'd say that's some of the best TV I've seen in a while. So good. Um, So hopefully if you're listening this much, you watched it or you don't plan to watch it because I just gave away everything. I think it's still worth a watch. Like we we don't do it any justice. Yeah. You need to watch it. It's so good. Um, Moving on to Pamela Anderson. Yeah. I I walked by and saw you watching this. Yeah. Because that was one of those things like I'm like, Travis don't want to watch this. But in our generation, like when you think of Pamela Anderson, what comes to mind? Playboy. Playboy. Right. Big boobs, blonde hair. OG sex tape. See, I kind of didn't remember the sex tape part, but I did know that she was with Tommy Lee and it was like this. Yeah, I think rock I've, I've seen it probably like at an age where I probably shouldn't have seen the it. The sex tape? Yeah, but not like I watched it from beginning to end, but I've definitely seen it. Oh, see, And yeah, I, I, I remember them being like on a boat or something. Yeah, because it was their home footage. Okay. So real quick on that. Basically, they met and four days later they got married. Love it. And she was in a relationship with someone else. Oh. So she was supposed to, she was on vacation in Cancun, I think. And then when she got back, she was supposed to go with her boyfriend and meet his parents. But when she got back, she had to be like, um, I'm married, <laughs> which is wild. Um, but that's not the part I wanted to talk about. On the vacation, they were recording themselves doing shit, whatever. And then it got stolen years later. And that's where the sex tape came. But the part that I wanted to talk about was how what you grow up witnessing as your um, example of love affects you. Even when you know it's bad, it's like hard to escape it. Like you subconsciously seek the destruction or the not destruction. What's the word? Dysfunction that you saw growing up. So her parents were together. They're still together. Um, but he was like a drunk, mm. abusive. She says she remembers like him throwing the vacuum cleaner over his over her mom's head out the window. And then they when they would fight, they would kind of her and her brother would go outside. 
And then when they would come back in, her parents were like making out and going in the room and closing the door. Like they would be like chaotic and then super like mm, high, l- highs and lows. Yes, like intense highs and lows. They done separated, left each other, remarried in like old age, like super toxic, but never could let each other go. Okay. And it's like she her life, she's been married like five times. Like she's always trying to find love. And with her baby daddy, Tommy Lee, that obsessive love, they got married within four days. When she had her second kid, he was like days old or weeks old. He was crying on the floor, kind of begging for her attention. Even though they had two kids, one a newborn, and it caused him to kind of be abusive to her. She had to call the cops and everything. Because he wanted her attention so bad. Like he was fighting for her attention from the kids. Okay. She knew it was so toxic and she actually left him. But she still, to this day, is always trying to seek the type of love she had from him. Mm. So even though she knew it was bad, she's still looking for it in other men. So every relationship she's in, it doesn't work because it's not as intense of a love as his love for her. Isn't that fucking crazy? That is crazy. And I do think the love can be intense without it being toxic. It could be. But she also, she first talks about how like amazing the love was. But then she she recounts like red flags that she kind of was ignoring. She was on the set of Baywatch. He will pop up like during her scenes and watch. And one day he saw her kiss a actor and he went in her her trailer and like trashed the whole shit. Broke things in her room, everything. And then she wrote, she used to write diaries, which is amazing for the documentary. She wrote how like, you know, and I apologize for lying as he put it because she just never told him, omitted the truth, even though you call it lying too, apparently. So what, she was pissed that she didn't tell him that there was a kissing scene. Yes. Okay. Which is, you could be upset about that, but trashing her room and also showing up on set. And it used to make everyone tense. They used to change her lines and change things not to piss him off. Mm. That's a major red flag. And she didn't even realize it. Or knew, but like, whatever, that's what love is supposed to feel like. Yeah. Um, So I was super proud of her for actually leaving him and not, no, she never got back with him. And she said, you know, over the years, like, she just never did. But... She's never been able to be happy with anyone. And she even now admits, like, I think it's because I could never be with Tommy. Like, he's the only person I would be happy with, but I, I'm i not going to allow myself because of the toxicity. And he's remarried. Probably. I don't know. I, it was all about her. They didn't really say. They talked about him more so during the years they were together. And she said, like, none of her boyfriends ever liked him. It was like a rough 18 years of co-parenting. Mm. Um, but it was just a a reminder of, like, how even when we know it's not good for us, we seek it. That's a good point. It's, um, you're addicted to that dysfunction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, even her recent marriage, she said, I met, like, a, he was, like, one of the contractors for her house. She goes, you know, maybe I just needed, like, a regular guy. And they were divorced within a year. It kind of reminds me of talking about an ex of mine being, like, a, um, what was the example I used? A, comf- a security, a security blanket. blanket. Mm-hmm. That's, bit, like, it's it's the quote-unquote evil she knows, right? Mm-hmm. She She knows what she's getting with him. Mm-hmm. And the extreme highs made her feel good, although she can re- quickly realize that it wasn't appropriate because look how you're reacting to just me giving attention to our children. Mm-hmm. And it's not like children I have with someone else. It's And, you know, he children. admitted that um, he was like on an interview, I guess. And someone asked him, like, you know, like, what caused you to act this way? And he said, you know, I had to adjust to now sharing my attention with two people and i just wasn't prepared for that and like that's, you know i'm butchering his words but basically he admitted it and that's valid mm-hmm. i think a lot of parents are trying to navigate that space right they're trying to figure out i need to be a 
need to be here for this person that can't take care of themselves. Like they literally will die if I'm not here for them. Mm -hmm. But I also have a romantic partner Mm -hmm. and you have to find that balance. And luckily, I mean, hopefully you have someone who is helping you and understanding that the time that you have had together is not going to be the same ever again. And it's also like, yes, balance. But at the end of the day, our kids need us, especially newborns, right? Like, I cannot go hug you while the baby's screaming his head off. Like, that's extreme. Like, there's, he clearly was just irrational in his expectations of her. Um, And I think we have to be prepared for that. Like, there's going to be moments where, like, your needs are going to come last for a while. That doesn't mean you're going to be 100% neglecting your relationship. But really, like, (laughs) you know, there's so many things, like, even as parents that like we're like, oh, we got to bathe this one and we got to wash Eli's hair or we got to pr- help him with this homework. Like there's so many things we got to do for our kids that we have to put ourselves second to sometimes. And it's just like, if you're not ready for that, don't have kids. And I freaking admire people who are like, I'm never going to be ready for that. So I'm not having kids. Good. Yeah, it's respectable. It's, it's hard. It's a lot. It's like, I feel sometimes as parents you judge people who are like your age and don't have kids yet Mm because you're like but i feel like selfishly you want them to feel some of that not me i don't have that like i give it up to people i only feel bad when they do want kids and they just Mm -hmm. haven't you know found someone or the circumstances or genuinely having issues reproducing like that's when i feel bad but like I never look at a girl or woman in their 30s like that's just living their life. And I'm like, when are they going to settle down? Like, never. Like, that never crosses my mind. But it's a thing. It's just a societal thing. Yeah, it's like, definitely e- a societal thing, but like, not for me. Even as we got married, like, especially how quickly we got married, if people just assumed you were pregnant. We were just trying to, like, have a shotgun wedding. Yeah, yeah. Um. So, yeah. And even years to come, every, it was always the question, when mm-hmm. are you having a baby? When, when It's just expected. Yeah. Mm -mm. I know for sure I can't handle one more, at least not right now. Yeah. Yeah. Last night he had us up in the middle of the night screaming his head off. (laughs) Wasn't going to talk about that, but. I just remembered. Yeah, it was a rough night. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, I think that's a wrap. So two spoilers for the Pamela Anderson documentary on Netflix and then Last of Us. Was it HBO? HBO. Yeah, looking forward to episode four tonight. My love. Daddy. Do you still like me? I still like you. Do you still like me? I do, very much so. (laughs) (laughs) Peace, Peace. y'all.